So, in the optimization context, what I'd like to be able to do is to maximize my throughput subject to stability constraints. In other words, I want to have the maximum possible throughput such that my system is stable. And the two things that I can adjust, at least in our simulation model, to control this are the number of operators and the arrival rate, or the inner arrival time, the inverse. So in the optimization context, this is my objective. This is my single constraint. And these are my decision variables. Of course, the next step, we have to define all of these terms. Of course, the number of operators is pretty simple to define. The arrival rate in our simulation is just specified by the inner arrival time. But we haven't really talked about how to define these two terms, stability and throughput, in the context of our simulation model. In our first experiment, we reduce the inner arrival time, uh, which is the exact same thing as increasing the arrival rate, while watching the whip level. We looked at both the average whip level and the ending whip level, and our basic idea was to try to make sure that the whip level wasn't growing without bounds. For our optimization model, we want to formalize those two concepts a little bit more. The objective in this optimization turns out to be fairly straightforward. We're going to define the objective as the number of departures per hour, or per any unit time that we want, but we're going to use hours because we already have our simulation set up that way. Stability is a little bit more difficult to involve and uh, to define, and in, in fact, we can define it in several different ways. Uh, we already mentioned using the whip level. We could set a target average whip level. Uh, we could set a target uh, maximum whip level. We could have some kind of ratio between those two values. And that's certainly something you should experiment with. We're going to use a little di bit different criteria here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to monitor the ratio of the departure rate to the arrival rate. And of course, ideally, we'd like this ratio to be close to 1, uh, basically meaning everything that arrives departs. Of course, we have to accommodate some level of whip. So what we're going to do is we're going to ensure that this value falls below some threshold. So for our optimization model, when we get back to Simio, we need to be able to define these things inside our model. In other words, the departure rate here and here, the arrival rate, uh, we have to specify the threshold value, and then we have to be able to tell Simio that our objective is to maximize uh, this throughput value. One other thing we'd like to do as a secondary objective is minimize the number of operators. For this model, we've already shown that we need more than one operator in order to achieve stability, but we also know that we don't need any more than four operators, because once we have one operator for each station, uh, any additional operators would be simply idle. What we don't know is whether we need two, three, or four operators, and so we'd like to incorporate that into our objective as, as a secondary criterion. So now back to our Simio model. Uh, to implement the optimization we just described, we'll use the departure rate uh, as the objective that we'd like to maximize. For our stability condition, we'll use the ratio of the departures to arrivals multiplied by 100 to give us a percentage. And for our decision variables, we'll use the number of operators and the part enter arrival time. And so we will create a new experiment. Let's create a new experiment. And the first thing we're going to do is select this OptQuest add-in. The OptQuest add-in will do uh, allow us to perform the optimization that we're interested in performing. And again, recall that since we have the reference properties for the number of operators and mean in arrival time, they show up as controls in the experiment. So next we need to define the responses for our experiment. And so first we'll define the throughput. And recall the throughput is the rate at which parts depart the system. So we'll use the ship object, input buffer, number entered, divided by 
time now. And so this says the number of parts that entered the input buffer of the ship object, in other words, the number of departing parts divided by the current time evaluated at the end of the run. For our second response, we will call this stability. And recall the stability is defined as the departure rate divided by the arrival rate. Multiply that by 100, 100 to make it a percentage. So it's the same rate that we had before, the ship object, input buffer, number entered, divided by the part arrivals, output buffer, number entered, times 100. So the departure rate divided by the arrival rate times 100. Of course, we didn't have to convert uh, the numbers to rates because we would both we'd be dividing both numbers by the simulation time. And they would simply cancel one another out. Also, let's add the whip responses that we had before. So let's have the average whip as the name. And that recall, that was the num insist average and the maximum whip. So we'll call this or final whip, not maximum whip, um, final whip. And we define the final whip as the output statistic final whip value. So we have our throughput, which we're going to maximize, the stability that we will use as a constraint, and we have the average and final whip, uh, just so we can uh, compare values. One other response we need to have, and I will come back as to why we need this here in just a little bit, we want to have the number of operators. Number operators, and this will simply be the num ops, oops, try that again, num ops reference property. So the next step is to go back to our controls and responses and to define the actual optimization so that we can turn it over to the OptQuest add-in. So for the controls, what we'll do is we'll set minimum and maximum and increment values and also specify that we do want to include those in the optimization. So for the number of operators, we know it has to be greater than or equal to 2 and we know it will be less than or equal to 4, so we'll just tell it to use values between 2 and 4. For the mean inner arrival time, we know that it can't handle values below 3. And we also know that it can do a bit better than 4.21, which was our baseline. So we'll make this between 3 and 4. And instead of having an increment of 1, we'll specify an increment of 0 0.01. In terms of our responses, we want the throughput, the objective, to be maximized. We don't have a lower or upper bound. We want this to be absolutely maximized. For the stability condition, we don't have an objective value because we don't want it to be included in the objective function, but instead we want to have a lower bound. And let's put our lower bound at 99%. That's something we can come back and change later if we want to do that. For the average and final whip, we, they're not there as part of the optimization currently. We just want to observe those values. Now here's the reason we had to have the number of operators as a control and as a response, because we want to recall our secondary objective is to minimize the number of operators. So I can go back in the response and specify that I would like to minimize that value. Next, I will select the experiment properties. And so the experiment properties, because we have the OptQuest add-in, uh, it has the uh, OptQuest section here. And so we will go in and specify that our primary response is throughput. And we will leave these at their default values. And we want to change to a multi-objection weighted objective function because we have two components to our objective. In this weighted objective function, it's going, it will weight the throughput and the number of operators by their corresponding weight. Now, because of the values we're going to have, we're going to increase the weight of the throughput to 10 and leave the weight for the number of operators at 1. As you recall, the, the throughput is in on the order of 0 0.25, 0 0.26,
and so when we multiply that by 10, the the objective function will be weighted more towards the throughput than to the number of operators. And so we have now defined our optimization in terms that OptQuest needs, where we are maximizing a function of our throughput and the number of operators, subject to the stability condition that the ratio of the, uh, sh the output rate to the input rate times 100 is less than 99. And we are telling OptQuest that it needs to specify the number of operators varied between 2 and 4 with increments of 1, and the mean and arrival time between 3 and 4 on increments of 0 0.01. At this point, we can tell Simio to run, and OptQuest now takes over. And you can see that it is running different scenarios with different values and the red highlighted values under stability are the ones that don't meet the stability condition. So now that OpQuest is terminated, we can highlight our throughput column and right click and sort our values in descending order. And you can see we have an awful lot of infeasible um, solutions because the stability is less than 99%. I believe earlier I said that we were looking for a value less than 99%. Of course in our stability condition we have 99 as a lower bound so we're actually looking for values above 99% and that will define uh, the feasibility region. And so our first value our first feasible value is also our highest throughput value. So we have three operators and 3.9 is our mean inner arrival rate. So we have that 3.9 inner arrival rate with two, three, and four operators. And you can see with three operators, we've actually achieved a slightly better rate than with four operators, although this is probably uh, not statistically significant. So at this point, uh, what we would want to do is probably do some additional experimentation within this region uh, right here. And so I would go back and change the number of operators. We don't need four. We're pretty sure we can do it with two or three. And then I would narrow down my mean and arrival time to be between these uh, the, between this attractive region. And so let's put our minimum value at 3.7. And our maximum value, let's say, at 3.9. And let's make the increment a little bit smaller. So now we will go by 0.01 rather than 0.1. And so we can explore the region in between the 3.7 and 3.9. So now when we click Go, of course, OptQuest resets. And it starts a new optimization. So our second run of OptQuest is now terminated. So we can go back and sort descending. And again, we have some infeasible values here at the top. And you can see that our first feasible value in our sorted list uh, has three operators and a 3.74 uh, for mean inner arrival time. And we achieved a throughput rate of 0.2655. Uh, and you can see the additional values. So if we drop down the inner arrival rate and so on, and we can also look in our other options where we have two operators. So as I said before, there's nothing absolutely magical about the stability condition we use. We could also use additional stability conditions such as the average whip has to be below a given value. So it looks like our average whip goes anywhere between uh, 15 to about 22, 20, here's a 29. Uh, we could limit that whip to be no more than 20. Uh, and see how the response is varied. Uh, we could also adjust the stability condition. We set the stability condition somewhat arbitrarily at 99%. We could make that 99.5%. We could make that 98%. And we could rerun the OpQuest and observe those different values.